Hey, welcome back, Paulding County Virtual Academy students. We're here for our next lecture in U.S. history. Today we're going to be doing mo Module 5.2, Causes of the Civil War. So what we talked about last time was we talked about pretty much how things got really bad between pro-slavery and anti-slavery groups in the 1850s, how things such as the Kansas-Nebraska Act, the Dred Scott case, and John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry are all going to increase tensions between North and South. Well, things are going to get even worse. It doesn't get any better from here on out. And the next year is the year 1860. And the election of 1860 is really going to be the final straw for the South and will eventually lead to the South just trying to secede from the Union and then the start of the actual Civil War. Now, in that election of 1860, this guy right here, Abraham Lincoln, you know, the tall man from Illinois, is going to be nominated and he's going to argue for this free soil and a strong national government. Free soil simply just meant that you were going to have land without the extension of slavery. Now, the Democrats, on the other hand, they were really split during this election of 1860. They split between three different groups. I mean, you can see all the different colors on the map. And even though there was more Democrats than there were Republicans during this particular time period, because they split their vote, this allowed, uh, this allowed Lincoln to eventually win. Even though he only got 40% of all votes cast, he was able to get 59% of all electoral votes. And that's, that's how they were able to do it. And that's because, you know, the Democrats are, you know, divided between people like Stephen A. Douglas, who was the guy who passed that Kansas-Nebraska Act, John Breckinridge, and a few other people out there. So Lincoln is going to win without a single Southern vote. And Southerners are really upset with Lincoln. And they're they pretty much think that Lincoln's going to try and abolish slavery. I mean, and the reason why they're thinking that is that in 1858, Lincoln had given a pretty famous speech. I actually quoted the Bible, and it said, I believe that, you know, um, a house divided against itself cannot stand, that this country is either going to be all free or all slave. And Southerners are like, oh, well, that means that you want it to be all free. That means slavery is about to go. That means we gots to go. And as a result of that, in December of 1860, this is just one month, after the election, elections happened in November, so in December of 1860, South Carolina becomes the first state to attempt to secede from the Union. Now, you're going to need to know that. That's going to be, on, that's going to be a question on your test, so make sure that you know South Carolina was the first state to secede from the Union. And they're quickly followed. They are quickly followed by a several other southern states. They're followed quickly by Georgia, Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Now, eventually, Virginia or part of Virginia is going to join them. They don't join them just quite yet. And so we're going to see this as being really one of the first kind of big sparks towards the beginning of the Civil War. But Lincoln is really, really trying to avoid outright warfare. He's trying to see if he can't kind of negotiate something, some kind of compromise to kind of get them back in. But one of the big sticking points for the South was federal bases, U.S. forts that were in the South. And probably the most famous one was Fort Sumter. Now, Fort Sumter was located in Charleston, South Carolina. It was a fort that guarded the harbor. And so oh, it was held by Union forces. And so the Confederates wanted the Union forces to leave. The Union forces wouldn't leave. And so Lincoln was faced with this situation. Do I reinforce the troops there? And if he did so, that would be almost kind of an act of war. Did he withdraw the troops and let the South have it? And that would be kind of giving up and giving in. And he definitely didn't want to do that. But his final other option was to try and just resupply them. Just give them more food and ammunition and things like that. And just see if they could kind of hold out and just kind of sit there. But when he did so, when Lincoln attempted to send aid to the soldiers, the Confederates fired on the fort. Now, this is a fairly inaccurate painting of that, of that particular attack, but, you know, it's the famous one anyways. Now, the firing on Fort Sumner by Confederate forces is going to be the first shots of the Civil War, and it's the first kind of start of that entire war. Now, after Fort Sumner, or... The Upper South, that's Arkansas, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Virginia, they're all going to secede and they're going to join the Confederacy as well. 
but not all slave states leave. Missouri, Kentucky, Delaware, Maryland, and about a third of Virginia stay in the Union. They become known as the border states. They're going to be pretty important later on to the outcome of the war. And the war is pretty much on at this point. Now, there is one last thing to kind of touch about, touch on, and that's what kind of Lincoln's doing really as a result of this. Now, Lincoln does a few things uh, immediately. He does call for some more volunteers, for 300,000 more volunteers for, uh, for three months. A lot of people thought this was going to be a pretty short war. But another thing that he does is he suspends something called habeas corpus. Now, basically, this is a law that prevents the government just from a arresting you and throwing you in jail without either some evidence or a trial or anything like that. And he suspends this. He especially suspends this in the state of Maryland and especially around Baltimore, where there was a bunch of newspapers um, that were unsupportive of the war and were trying to convince people just to let the South go. And he not only uh, arrests some of the editors and speakers, but he also closes down some of these newspapers. And this is in many ways a violation of First Amendment freedom of the speech and freedom of the press. But one of the things that we're going to kind of we're, we'll hit up a few more times throughout this year is that how in U.S. history, in times of crisis, oftentimes rights are lost. So we'll talk about how this happens. Something similar happens in, during World War I and in World War II. And today, during our current war on terror, how we've lost things like our right to privacy, especially online. Well, that brings us up to really kind of the first shots of this uh, of this Civil War. And so next time we're going to be getting into the actual battles of the Civil War and some more Lincoln's actions, especially come up some of his famous speeches, uh, such as the uh, Gettysburg Address and the Emancipation Proclamation. So get ready for that next time. Just remember from this video, big things to remember includes things such as the election of 1860, Lincoln winning that, South Carolina being the first state to secede, the firing at Fort Sumter being the first shots of the war, and finally, Lincoln suspending habeas corpus to limit speech and sedition during the war. Well, until next time, I hope you have a great time. Bye for now.